Hello fellow Unreal Engine developers. Today we're going to improve upon our blowing sand effect. We're going to go from this, where it darkens the materials underneath, to this, where it only masks the light sand blowing over the desert. Let's get straight into it. This is where we left off on the last video, creating our desert sand. If you uh, haven't seen any of my previous videos, follow the playlist in the description below. And um, one of my viewers pointed out that as well as creating the light sand on the uh, desert wind effect or desert sand blowing effect, it also darkened the underlying material as well. And um, I kind of agree with that sentiment. I think we can do slightly better. So I've cranked the wind blend up to one here so you can really see the effect. You've got the dark, uh, sorry, the light sand here, but you've also got the dark patches that are um, shadowing the uh, material underneath. I've cranked the wind blend up to one so you can see it. When you have the wind blend at something like sort of 0.3 or 0.4, it's not so noticeable, um, but you do see, uh, especially with the mask, you do see that the where the mask ends, it, um, it goes from a sort of darker colored desert to a lighter colored desert. So we can improve upon that. And um, let me put the wind blend to 0.5, so it's sort of a middle section, and then we'll see what it looks like afterwards. So we've got our material here on the right hand side, the material instance for the bright desert sand. If we go into the um, hierarchy, at the top level and go into our master material, which is MMS surface material and open that up. What we're going to do is we're going to change our, we're, we're going to only add a couple of nodes. So your work so far has not been in vain, but what we've been doing is we've been treating the desert wind at the moment or the desert carpet um, sand as a material. And then we've been blending it in with any existing materials in the landscape. So here was our blend of um, desert sand and desert rock. And then finally we blended in the sand uh, blowing material. Uh, the problem with that approach is that we're blending a color that goes from black to white. So as we up the blend, we end up with um, a lot of um, black color where the original landscape would, would, would have been. So what we want to do is instead of treating this as a material, let's treat it as a mask um, and then we'll apply the mask to the color uh, of the landscape in order to just lighten where the sand is and leave the um, unchanged parts of the mask, the zero parts of the mask unchanged. So let's uh, start doing that. Instead of doing this blend of material attributes here, let's get rid of that um, and leave those there for time being. We'll use those in a minute. Let's just change the comment for this. Let's call this desert wind mask because that's what it is really now. And we'll get rid of the make material attributes. We'll get rid of this zero for the specular. And actually we won't need the color anymore because we, as I said, we're just treating this as a mask rather than a color. So get rid of that. And now what we'll do is we will take our elements here. Let's just drag them closer. Detach the wind blend by pressing the Alt key and removing that. And we'll make the wind blend the factor for our mask. So at this point in time, what we've got is we've got our, our cloud texture or noise texture being panned. Uh, that's a mask between zero and one. We'll multiply it by our wind blend. So if our wind blend is zero, it's going to make the mask zero, no effect. And then we can introduce any sort of blend to strengthen the effect. The next thing we want to do is take our um, blowing sand layer and multiply it by that. That way our mask will only happen anywhere we have painted the blowing sand texture on the surface. And now what we have is we have a mask from zero to one. Actually, it could be more than one if the wind blend is over one, but let's just say from zero to a figure here, and we want to change the color. So how do we affect the um, color, but leave the color as it was where the mask is zero 
and multiply it as it gets higher. Well, if we multiply a colour by zero, we get black. So we're back to the same problem. So the final thing we need to do here is a simple add. And we will add, I think by default, it will do add one. So what that now means is where we had zero here, we'll now have one. And if we had from zero to one, we'll have one to two. If we have from zero, if our wind blend is less, we have say zero to 0 0.1, we'll have one to 1.1. So now if we multiply that by the color, anywhere the mask wasn't, uh, or the, the noise wasn't showing anything, we will have unchanged color. And anywhere it multiplies, it will have a stronger tint, i.e. a lighter color. So now we have our mask. Now we just need to apply it to the color of the landscape. So simplest way of doing that is we've done our layer blend. Out of here, we will get material attributes. And in the um, array elements here, just add in one element base color. And now we will multiply that by our mask. And finally, we will set material attributes and again add an element, make sure it's base color and then plug the changed uh, base color into that and then make sure you drag the material attributes to here. So this get and set, we haven't used this before. This is just saving you having to break material attributes like here and drag in all of the elements between. So it will copy all of the material attributes and then we're overriding the base color with our new base color. And don't forget at the end here to attach this to the final output. And let's just put a comment around here, say apply desert blowing sand mask and we are done here so if we now save this you'll notice on the right hand side in our material instance we no longer have a color uh, because we're not using color anymore if you go back to the desert at the moment the effect is it's there but it's very um, subdued because our wind blend now now needs to be increased. So let's put our wind blend up to two. And now you can see, actually let's put it even higher, four, so you can see it. And now you can see that where the noise texture is black, there is no change to the underlying texture. And where it's white, it will apply the mask in various strengths depending on the um, depending on the wind blend here. So as I said, you can make it quite subtle. And then if you move around here, you can see that's our mask over there. And it doesn't have this sort of dark patch around it. That's probably a bit strong. So let's go down to one. And there you've got um, our nice subtle mask without the dark patches showing. So this is a, I think, much improved effect. And um, the other thing you can do as well is you can actually make it negative to make it to darken the color as well. So if I do something like minus two, that's a bit dark, maybe minus 1.5 or minus 1.2. You can see you get like dark patches going over. So if you wanted sort of dark smoke going over your surface, you could do that as well. But I'll go back to my positive wind blend. And uh, I hope you've uh, found today's tutorial useful and an improvement on the previous blowing sand. Uh, as always, stay subscribed and I'll bring you another tutorial soon. See you then.